One more time, you are welcome back to this Mighty Man series. And we are talking about how to live as a mighty man in our world today. As a male figure, you have to get up. You have to be your best. You cannot just lie down and lie low. We can afford to let women and children lie low because they have the male figure to carry them. But who will carry you? Who will stand up for you? Who will be behind you? That's we're going to be our point of discussion right now. You know, if the woman has a head, the Bible says the man is the head of the woman. As a man, you are becoming responsible. Who will not be responsible for you? Who will take care of you? Who will hear your voice? Who will clean your tears? Who can you open your heart to that will not make fun of you? And that's where we are going today. We are going to go back to the very creation of mankind. The very first male that was made in the Bible, that was Adam, was the male figure that was made, the first man that was made. And when it was made, I'd like us to read the verse around it. And as we read the verse, you will see what is the real foundation for a male figure. What can the male figure fall upon? You as a man, who do you fall upon? Your wife can fall on you. Your children can fall on you. Society can fall on you. But who do you fall upon? Who do you, who, who is behind you? When your back is against the wall, who is the wall that your back is going to hold or be, be held by? So let's read Genesis chapter 2. We are God. The man, the first male figure came out. The Bible said this in, in Genesis 2 verse 7. And the Lord God formed the man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul. The Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man whom he had formed. And out of the ground, the Lord God made every tree grow that is pleasant to the sight and good for food, and so on and so on. If you notice, the Bible said God formed man from the dust of the ground. I can see a rising up, a picking up. You know, when God got to that place where man was formed, it was just dust. And the Almighty put his hand to the soil. That means for God to make that male figure, God got his hands dirty. He put his hand in the soil, gathering. You know, before that time, he would only speak, let there be, let there be, let there be. But when he came to the male, when he came to the man, he got on the ground. Just can you imagine God stooping down to the ground? God picking up the dust and forming legs, hands, liver, lungs, brain, in his almightiness and in all his wisdom and intricacies, forming, I mean, every part of the male figure, God was touching and working with it. And God was bringing this man up. And after doing all that, that was just the casement, that's just the body. The Bible said, and God breathed into his nostril the breath of life. Listen to me. Look, look at me. I mean, God, God was face to face with this man. I mean, the first time God, the man opened his eyes, he was nose to nose with God. I mean, think about that. So he was face to face with God. I mean, the very first person that the male figure saw was God. Of course, he saw the garden later. He saw the woman later and other things. But the very first face to face encounter of this male figure was with God Almighty. So God is the most important foundation for a man. Let's forget this idea that spiritual things and God is for women folk to go to church. But you know, we male figure, we are actually made face to face with God. That means God breathed into the nursery of that male man. That means his very first breath was not taken from his mother, was taken from God, was taken from Jehovah, the Almighty One. And I just want to let you know that there's a face-to-face -face encounter with God that this man had. And that, that, that's not too surprising because the Bible says you are the image and the glory of God. Remember that about identity? Now, you can never have an image in a mirror until the objects stand close to the mirror. So what happened is that God stood or came face to face, nose to nose with Adam. So when Adam popped his eyes open, the very first person he saw was God. I believe that as a man figure, 
you must be face to face with God. You must get in face to face encounter with God. We must remove all the veil, all the cover, all the stuff and get real with God. You know, we male figure, we can be highly competitive. We can try to outdo the others and always have our guard up. But when we come to God, we don't have to have our guard up. We don't have to compete because he's our creator, not our competitor. So God is number one to the male figure. In fact, if we are the image and the glory of God, remove God, we are the image of nothing and the glory of nothing. That's what Solomon said about us. He said, vanity upon vanity, everything is vanity. Or we can see this, nothing upon nothing. Everything is nothing. You know why? God is no more. That's so relevant. But when a man, the male figure, brings God back on the scene, it's no more vanity. It's going to be fulfillment, satisfaction, and joy, and gladness. Now you may say to me, oh, 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 do I need God today? How beneficial is God in my life today? Do I need God as a man? I mean, this is women's folk. God is a softy, touchy kind of a thing. I want some concrete hardware kind of a thing. Is God beneficial? Let's look at the cost benefit analysis of this thing. If, 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 if you don't have God, what does, that make, what does that make you as a man? It makes you nothing. It makes you dust. It makes you less than zero. Because if you are the image and the glory of God, then that means that you are actually nobody without God. We're going to look at the benefits of God in our life by the next episode. But right now, I want you to see that you are supposed to have face-to-face -face encounter with God. You know, David was the wonder of a man. The King David in the Bible, he wrote the book of Psalms that everybody in the world loved today. But guess as much, David said, Oh God, thou art my God. Early will I seek you. My soul thirsty for you. My body longs for you in a dry and thirsty land where there's no water. He said, I want to see your power and your glory as I've seen you in the sanctuary. That's Psalm 63. So you can see David, the man's man, crying out to God, Oh God, you are my God. Highly will I seek you. You see, the word God is from the word Elohim. And that word means the strong one. I like that. So the man must have a strong one. And that's Jehovah God, the almighty God. Who is your strong one? Your talent, your mouth, your money. Those things will fade away. But Jehovah is eternal. You want to be your strong one. Will you let him be? Open up your heart to him. You know, it's not going to do our heart today. That's why I sent Jesus, the correct image, so you can be imaged after God and patterned after the Almighty. So you can follow him all through life. And you can say like David, Oh God, you are my God. Only will I seek you. My soul is searching for you and my body longs for you in this dry and wasteful land. Till we see you again, keep looking for him and you'll find him.